My ex-boyfriend tried to una live me and my daughter and tracked us with an air tag. I don't know if I watch too many crime shows or if I'm just paranoid, so I've come here to ask. Last week, I made chicken gnocchi soup. When it was almost done, I started helping my daughter with a school project. She got us both a bowl and a few seconds later, my BF runs into the room with a bowl and tells me to eat the bowl he has. I told him it was all the same and he insisted that he wanted mine because it had more chicken. Thinking back now, I don't know how he would know that considering my daughter dished it out. My daughter took the bowl he gave me and said she would eat it. He yanked it out of hand and said, no, it's for mom. I took the bowl and he went to the living room. I continued doing my daughter's project and told her not to eat the soup. Twenty-ish minutes later, I walked into the kitchen to pour the soups out and he was still eating his. He asked why we didn't eat any and I said the cat got into it while we were waiting for it to cool down. He screamed, what? Was it your bowl? Cats can't eat that. I told him it was only a lick, but he has been stressed out watching the cat like a hawk, obsessive even. His reaction was very weird. These accidents all happened before the soup incident over the span of six months. It wasn't one after another in a short period of time. Since then, my emergency money has gone missing. I keep money hidden just in case. I lost my older sister because she wasn't able to escape a dangerous situation and I literally swore on her grave I would never be in that position. After the soup incident I went to get my money and it was gone. It was hidden and I changed the location every few months. I asked my daughter if maybe she found it and that if she took it I wouldn't be mad because I knew she couldn't have spent it. She said no. A few hours later she tells me she forgot but the other day her and my BF got pulled over and she saw my pink wallet in his glove box. I did not tell her which wallet it was in or that it was in a wallet. I decided to ask him if he found it by accident. He asked me why I was hiding a large amount of money, you know you could never leave me, and laughed. He has never said anything like that before. I told him it was for my daughter's Christmas. He said no he didn't find the money but could use his credit card for gifts. I didn't tell him about my daughter seeing my wallet in his car. Now here are a few other things that have happened in the past few months that seemed random at the time, but now they don't. I have a severe allergy to latex. One day we were about to have sex, and I glanced at the mirror we have by our bed and saw the condom wrapper was a different color. I stopped him because it wasn't latex-free, and he said it was a mistake and just an older one he had. We have been dating for over two years, and he knows how serious my allergy is. My EpiPen that I keep in my room is missing, and I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it was missing until I was searching for my money. Another odd thing is one day he was following me down the stairs while I was carrying laundry and he kicked the back of my leg and I fell. He said he slipped, but the stairs are wood and he was wearing his steel toe boots. At the time I thought it was an accident. Am I overthinking this? My anxiety has been at an all-time high. Do I watch too much true crime? Here is why I think I might be the asshole. We have a good relationship. He loves my daughter like she is his. We split all shared bills and we both pull our own weight around the apartment. We don't fight. He has never so much as raised his voice at me. We are paycheck to paycheck, but bills are paid. I thought about going to my mom's house for a few days and asking him when I get there when I'm safe about the money, but I don't have money to do that now. She is on a fixed income and can't help. I feel stupid for being scared. Last night I decided to check his car for my wallet and he caught me. I asked him for my money back and he tried playing dumb. I told him my daughter saw it there. He told me she was lying. I told him I never told her about the money or what wallet. He said he was a grown man and kids lie all the time. I asked him once more for my money and he said I'm not giving you money to leave me. I waited until he was in the shower to grab my cat and my daughter and we left. I can't take my cat with us to a shelter and the DV shelters are full. I was able to get us a night at a cheap motel. This exact situation is why I had money saved. I did everything right and now I'm screwed.
I feel like I just blew up my entire life. Update 1. I think my boyfriend put something in my soup. After that incident, I remembered a few months ago, he almost used a latex condom, knowing I'm severely allergic, and I also remembered when he accidentally knocked me down the stairs. I started piecing things together and realized my AP pen was gone as well as a large amount of money I had hidden. My daughter saw my old wallet in his glove box and he denied it. My post got a lot of attention and my account was shadow banned for a few days. I was able to appeal and get my account back because I'm not a bot or some AI. Now for the update. The day after we left, he sent me a picture of my AP pen and tried telling me it was in my nightstand the whole time. I tore that room apart looking for it, so I know for 100 CT it wasn't there. He took it. He tried getting me to come back telling me I scared myself stupid and watched too many true crime TV. Something didn't feel right so I told him to put my money and AP pen in the mailbox. We went back and forth and he denied having my money. He then said if we broke up you and Maria, my daughter, are no longer allowed in my apartment and will be treated like trespassers and sent me a pic of his target practice sheets. I went to the police about the money and was told it was a civil issue. I was upset but wanted the rest of my stuff so I asked for an escort. Yesterday, I finally got an escort into the apartment with a cop and my landlord. He destroyed everything of my daughter's and he ruined the laptop charger I use for work. No AP pen. My daughter's medication and backup medical supplies were ruined. Our landlord let me off the lease without having to pay an early termination fee, which is great considering I have no money. Motels are expensive. I don't want to get rid of our cat. All shelters are full, and this is scary as shit. Update 2. My OP got a lot of attention, but then my account got shadow banned and was temporarily removed. I just updated 5 days ago, but this will be my final update because there is nothing anyone can do. I was encouraged to go back to the police station after my last update. On Saturday, December 9th, I went back again. This time I printed out the threatening text messages that included the target practice sheets he sent, I explained in detail about the accidents proving he was trying to hurt me, and I even had my landlord put in writing that he believed our lives were in danger after seeing everything I was showing the police and let me leave my lease early. I brought in the destroyed medical supplies and medications. The police said they had already talked to him and said he didn't do any of it. He told them my daughter probably destroyed her stuff because she is special ed. She has very mild Asperger's but doesn't destroy things. Since it was his word against mine, they believed him. I didn't have proof he stole the money or that it even existed in the first place. I was told the AP pen was my responsibility and they won't do anything if it's lost. I was told to let it go and acted like I was bothering the police with my petty civil issues. I am so defeated and angry. My daughter isn't going to have gifts for Christmas because I have to save for a new deposit on an apartment. We have been staying in motels while I was reaching out to DV Resources. I can't get help without a restraining order slash police report. Every place is out of funds. He is getting away with everything and I'm so glad we got out because there is no doubt in my mind he would have gotten away with my murder. I know this sounds like my last update, but that is what happened, nothing new. No justice. No repercussions for him. He gets to stay in the apartment. My landlord offered me another unit across town, but I can't afford to move in. This exact situation is why I had money stashed away, because no one has ever cared about me slash us, and I knew that. There is nothing else I can do. Edit. All shelters are full. I found an organization who helps DV victims with housing, but only if you have a police report and a restraining order. I guess they are tired of victims going back to their partner, safety reasons, or something. I was denied a restraining order because I had no proof. I'm scared, exhausted, and disappointed. Update 3. A lot of people wanted an update so here it is. On Christmas he slashed my tires, knowing I would have to pay out of pocket to replace them, which I don't have. 
Today he threw a heavy patio chair through the window of the place we were staying at to let me know he knew where we were and I was asked to leave for everyone's safety. Except my daughter and I aren't safe. I walked in the sleet slash snow with my daughter and our cat and I felt vulnerable and like open prey so we came back to the police station to sit in the lobby until morning. Shelters are still full and I now have to disclose that he is dangerous anywhere we go. Police couldn't find him but I know he has to be close. I don't know what his end game is. Update 4 on Christmas he found where we were staying and slashed my tires and threw a heavy patio chair and planter through a window. He still hasn't been caught. I checked everywhere I could think of and still couldn't figure out how he was tracking us. I blocked him on everything including email after he sent me pics of his target practice sheets among other things. I got a cheap burner phone. My daughter was out of school for winter break so he didn't follow her or anything. I checked my car for a tracker. Still nothing. I do not have an iPhone so I couldn't check whatever app a AirTag is attached to. My cat is harness trained and wears a collar, but there was no tracker. Until today, I decided to feel up, sorry, only way I can describe it, the carrier. I ran my fingers over every inch of it and felt a bump on the bottom soft side. There was no new stitching or obvious cut. He had to use a seam ripper along the stitching. It was undetectable and I almost missed it. He had to have had help because I've never seen him sew anything. Probably the same person who is letting him hide now. If his excuse for the air tag was to track my cat he would have put it on his collar or harness because that is what he would wear when we go on walks slash car rides. My cat would never go in his carrier unless I was planning on leaving for more than a few days. I have no idea how long it has been there nor do I know how far the tracker works, but now we aren't safe where we are, again. I feel disgusting and I feel like hunted prey. This is so unnerving and I'm so uncomfortable. Who the f asterisk ck was I living with? Update 5. I finally got the restraining order. I'm hoping this update will make everyone as happy as it makes me. I was finally granted the restraining order. And we get the keys to our new apartment on the 11th. A place I can afford monthly and comes partially furnished. It's in a super safe area right by my daughter's school. There is security. We will spend our time living in our car until then and of course it has to be snowing, but we are together and we have our kitty. This nightmare is almost over. Edit. A restraining order didn't stop him. This morning he found me. I've been sick as hell, so after I dropped my daughter off at school, I went straight home. I didn't drive around to make sure no one was following me. I messed up. He broke my nose and shattered my orbital bone. He is in jail. Sorry for this update y'all. Update 6. Not being able to move even if my life depends on it. I know the importance of having money saved and I live within my means. How many of us is one disaster away from losing everything? A fire, job loss, a bank screw up, a late paycheck, illness, or someone stealing from you. I had money saved because I knew that any one of those things could happen and I wouldn't have anyone who could help me. And it did. Two months ago, my ex tried poisoning me and stole the money I had saved. It's been hell since. I was able to break my lease and leave. I went to my mom's over Christmas break but I came back because I didn't want to disrupt my daughter's schooling and I underestimated my ex. I was able to get an apartment through DV services very quickly which was a miracle. I know how hard it is to find housing and then try to come up with all the deposits a new place needs. I did it, the cards fell in my favor. But then I fucked up. On Friday I took my daughter to school and wasn't diligent. I will usually drive around to make sure I'm not being followed. To be honest, I started feeling crazy, paranoid, and angry I was wasting gas. Plus, I have pneumonia and strep that I haven't been able to pay for the antibiotics so I just went home to my bed. He found me and broke my nose, shattered my orbital bone, and I have a concussion. I had a restraining order and he was arrested. I shared this on another sub and everyone telling me to move, leave, run. Except I can't do that. 
It's hard trying to explain that to people for them to understand because it sounds like excuses, like I like living in fear or something. I can't pull money out of thin air. My credit card is maxed. I contacted DV services at the hospital and because I just got help, I can't get it again. The thing I didn't know about abusive men is that they don't just move on or stop. There are DV shelters, but they are full. I wish people would understand that I know how serious this is, but money doesn't grow on trees. Even if a life depends on it. Update 7. It all makes sense now. If you need more context, please read my past posts. In my first post I said how we had a normal relationship and he was never abusive, controlling, never raised his voice. The money that he ended up stealing was money I had hidden since before he even moved in. I was not hiding money to get away from him. I was not afraid of him. I lost my sister to DV and swore I'd never have that happen to me only to end up in that exact situation. We didn't have this spectacular love that was filled with insane chemistry, nowhere near a love of my life situation which is why I was so confused by how desperate he got. After he got arrested his mom went on a social media rant because I got her baby locked up and knew we were sleeping in my car so was telling her followers that if they find me to call her. Very bold and insane. One of my ex's friends saw this and commented it if you should be sticking up for him, he needs serious help. I don't know how I caught it before it was deleted but I reached out to him on my fake Facebook. Every time they were drinking, he would talk about her and then laugh it off. It made his friends uncomfortable, but they chalked it up to the booze. Two weeks ago when my daughter came to see me in the hospital, she was distraught. It made sense because I looked like hell, but she kept repeating over and over asking me why he did this to me. I think there was more to this, and I'm frightened to my core. Remember he stole my AP pen and money, but he destroyed almost everything of hers, and I didn't understand it, because she had nothing to do with the breakup. Why did he destroy her medicine? Why did he destroy her clothes? Fucking why? Don't abusers threaten their victim into not saying anything, or something is going to happen to someone slash something they love? I'm sick to my stomach even writing that out. I don't know where to go from here, how do I even begin a conversation about this with her? We are safe. I'm not worried about him finding us, because he is still in jail, which is great, because I'm out of money. He wasn't desperate and crazy, because he was losing me, I think it was because of her. Edit. My ex is getting bailed out tomorrow. I'm so angry, and scared. I wish I had faith in the justice system and with cops, because they are supposed to protect, right? Except that isn't always the case. I'm tired of being hurt and I'm tired of being scared. Anxiety is on 100. It's exhausting fearing my daughter and I's life. Update 8. I know a lot of people are following my posts and will be disappointed in hearing that my ex was bailed out. I'm still healing from when he broke my nose and shattered my orbital bone. I know a restraining order is just a piece of paper because he ignored it when I was attacked and the police aren't going to save me. For security, I only have a door bar that slides under the knob. I don't have a ring camera and I can't buy a pew pew until I have extra funds. He made me sell it a year ago because he was uncomfortable with it being in the house. Another red flag I missed. My question is what can I do to feel safer that doesn't require money? Every night my daughter and I push the couch in front of the door, but I'm worried that if there is a fire we can't get out. I have myself worried sick to the point of painful stomach ulcers. I tried talking to my nearest neighbor, but when I started explaining my situation and how it would be great if she could let me know if she sees anyone around my apartment she got weirded out. Which I get. Just looking for some peace of mind, will that ever exist in my life again? Update 9. I feel like I need to tell someone what is happening so that it makes it feel real and that I'm not just upset and crazy for nothing. My ex got out on bail last week. My daughter and I already left the new apartment we had moved into after he attacked me. My daughter's school knows about my situation and knows I have a restraining order. Today my daughter got a call from the front office at school. The secretary told her that the pickup car had changed from mine to a new car. 
She was being told this so that when school let out she wouldn't get upset when she didn't see my car. The new car is the same one as my ex's. It is a rare car slash color and she told me she knew it was his car. She didn't say anything to the secretary or her teacher because she was instantly scared. It breaks my heart that she was in fear because she thought he had got me and was going to get her. She was given the message hours before school let out so she spent all that time worrying. The last 10 minutes of the day is when the kids can use the bathroom and clean up. She started crying in front of her whole class and when the bell rang she refused to leave her classroom. I was in the carpool line when I got the call from her teacher. I have never seen her so upset and that is saying a lot because she was so upset when she visited me in the hospital. Face beat red, hyperventilating, snot everywhere, she had cried so hard she got a nosebleed. After they told me what happened I was livid. It all sounded like bullshit because the secretary never should have relayed the message without talking to me first since she said it was a male on the phone. As soon as the secretary looked my daughter up to find out which room to call she should have seen the message I thought I had saying no one should ever pick her up but me. No information should ever be released. He was never in contact with her so it's not that big of a deal, it was a mistake is what they told me. All he had to give was her full name and what grade she was in to get a message to her. They said that to me with a straight face, while the bruises he gave me were very visible proving he is a violent man. I'm so f asterisk king angry. She told me she knew I didn't get a new car, because as much as I try to hide it from her she knows I'm broke. She thought she was going to have to go with him. She has been so traumatized and I don't know what to do. She wants to switch to e-learning, but since it's not a medical reason and not a school-wide restriction I would have to pay to rent the laptop. Which I obviously can't. The school is calling it an innocent mistake and didn't even apologize. I know I'm the only one responsible for my daughter and I's safety, but damn if people could stop jeopardizing it like it's nothing and then acting like I'm the asshole for being upset because it was a mistake. He wasn't there after school, but he could have. That's where the story ends. Please consider subscribing to keep up to date on this post and other daily Reddit content.